Fox News exclusive now on those White House emails so many Americans received but never requested. The White House shedding some more light on how you may have gotten spammed by David Axelrod. Confirming to Fox News that the White House hired a private communications company to distribute the emails en masse, giving that group lists of names and email addresses. And now some are asking exactly how much of your tax money, if any, was used to hire this group and can anything be done about it? Congressman Thaddeus McCotter, a Republican from Michigan, is a member of the House Financial Services Committee. He's my guest now. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. All right, so you had a pretty harsh quote about this over the weekend, saying this is yet another ominous chapter in the administration's rabid campaign to jam its radical health care scheme onto an unwilling public by any means necessary. How do you get to that point from my intro point? Well, if you look at the overall strategy of the administration, it's a campaign mode rather than a governance mode. And when you've seen things set up, such as a White House snitch site where you can report third parties or other quote-unquote misinformation to the White House itself, and then you see the White House, again, because of a political intent, going so far as to start spamming people who have not requested it, you can start to see the pattern emerging that they are so bent on foisting this upon the American people that they are going beyond or at least stretching the boundaries of what has traditionally been understood as within the powers of the executive branch. But they say this company that did the, you know, the spamming, the emailing, whatever, however you want to refer to it, Gov Delivery, has been used by many branches of the government, uh, was hired before President Obama even took office. On January 1st it was hired. And that this, is, this sends out emails as a matter of course for the White House and for many other government groups. So there's nothing untoward about it. That, why would there be an issue with it? Well, it's untoward in the context. If you have received, let's say you've received this email, say Major Garrett has received an unsolicited email regarding this health care issue from the White House, and you may have said in the past something about the health care plan that you thought maybe somebody didn't like, you would not know whether you'd been reported to the White House site as putting forward disinformation or not. And here comes from the White House an unsolicited spam type of email to you. The overall effect of what we're staring at is not simply the company that's been involved or the taxpayer money involved, but the effect, the chilling effect that this could have on the health or debate of people who are opposed to it or people who have questions about it. But that's, th that we knew before. That we knew when we found out that the White House had the email addresses of folks who had never asked to be on an email list. This is a new wrinkle in it because we find out the White House has used this third party firm, this Gov Delivery, to send out the emails. And the Gov Delivery doesn't work for free. It requires a paycheck. And we, we assume that the White House has delivered one. And, and the question is, where did it get that money? Is that taxpayer money? And is there anything wrong with that? In other words, has the White House, it's one thing if the White House sends out an email right about uh, a, a hurricane alert or some sort of alert from FEMA or some federal government agency, which they have used this company for in the past. Is there a distinction here, Congressman, when they're sending out something from David Axelrod that takes aim at people who oppose health care reform and tries to convert them on board to the president's plan? Oh. In response to the last question, we move forward. You're absolutely right. The question is, these are unsolicited emails as opposed to, say, someone writing into the White House on health care with an issue and then getting a response or an emergency notification that comes through. So, again, what you're seeing is whereas we in the House have a franking commission we have to go through to ensure there's not a political content to information that we send out to people who have either written us or have sought other updates. Right, so you guys, just, just to stop you there, you've got a house, a body that's, that makes sure you don't do this, that makes sure if you're going to send something out on the pet taxpayer dime, it's going to be benign, it's not going to be a political message. Right, and that's why I think the White House should have strict guidelines adopted for itself. They're a separate equal branch of government. Clearly, they couldn't use the House Franking Commission, but to prevent political content from going in. But the key nature of what you're talking about, Megan, is the fact that these are unsolicited emails going out to people who may or may not have any idea as to why they're receiving them from the White House itself. And not only now that are they receiving them, but they may have paid for them. I mean, it's not only are you getting it and getting bothered by the White House, but you may have paid for it. Yes, you may have paid for it, and you may pay for it in more ways than one. Well, how do you stop that? I mean, if the White House, you know, I look at this, sometimes I think maybe they're just new at this. You know, maybe they don't know that you shouldn't use Gov Delivery to send out emails from David Axelrod as opposed to, you know, legitimate White House communications on matters of national importance. Is, is, could that be an innocent mistake for whatever, they, whatever message they want to deliver to us? 
And I think in fairness to everyone involved, this is new media. This is something that hasn't been around, such as Frank Mail, for quite some time. And that there are lines that have yet to be drawn, but clearly the intent is not to have people who have not re requested information from the White House to be receiving unsolicited spam emails because the potential for abuse is there. So I think that we have to have the White House itself internally look at its own standards and procedures to make sure, like the House, that they aren't doing the things that they could be perceived as politicizing an issue and emanating that is emanating from the White House in terms of the submission of emails to people who haven't solicited them. Maybe President Obama is thinking about that right now as he's on his hammock in Martha's Vineyard. We'll have to wait to find out. Congressman Thaddeus McCotter, always a pleasure having you. Thanks so much for being here, sir. Thanks. I, I'm sure he has.